can change the world. One life, one heart. If you're involved at all in the civic sector, and it turns out that most people probably are, what you really want is to be able to see the impact of the work that's being done. Well, we're going to be talking with people today who that's just what they do. Scott Oki and DVJ Chohan from See Your Impact. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So, basic question. The organization itself, See Your Impact, we're going to be describing it throughout, but how did this get started? Why did it get started in the first place? Well, Stan, I, I, ever since I retired from Microsoft, and it's been over 21 years now, uh, I have largely dedicated my life to the nonprofit space. And, um, I, you know, I've done some investing on the side. Uh, Dig Vijay's uh, company that he had started when he left Microsoft, I was an investor and on the board of that company. And uh, so we got to know each other, uh, you know, working with, uh, with Dig's uh, company. And uh, when the company was sold, uh, Dig Vijay remembered uh, kind of my business card uh, for the Oki Foundation. I've got the title Chief Volunteer because that's all I ever do is volunteer for various nonprofit causes. And, um, and Dig Vijay really gave me a call one afternoon and said, hey, Scott, you know, can I come over? Because I'd really like to, you know, figure out what I can do um, in the nonprofit space. And having a lot of scar tissue and having learned a lot of lessons, I said, absolutely, I'd love to share, share those lessons learned. So we spent an afternoon, and that was reminiscing about uh, you know some of the good things, some of the not so good things that uh, that were happening in the nonprofit space, uh, some of the opportunities that I felt uh, weren't being addressed, and from that afternoon, um, you know, we really kind of thought about, oh, here's a big opportunity, uh, and the big opportunity was based on a couple of uh, factors. Number one, of the over $300 billion a year that's given away by Americans uh, for various causes in the United States, it's interesting that the vast majority of that $300 billion is actually at the bottom of the philanthropic pyramid. Right? You think about the very large foundations, the Gates Foundation being the largest and many others, they actually represent a smaller amount of philanthropy that actually occurs. And so um, we said, well, isn't that interesting? And how, how could we possibly expand micro charities so that it really becomes even bigger than it already is? Um, and then I was reminiscing about the fact that of the various checks that Lori and I, my wife, that we have written uh, through the Oki Foundation, uh, how many times had we ever seen the impact on the end beneficiary of our giving? And even though we're writing large checks, I could count the number on one hand. And the few times that we actually saw the end beneficiary only motivated us to want to do more. Dig Vijay, I, I wanted to bring you into this because typically when Microsoft people get together uh, in the charitable world, good things happen. Is that, what ha is that what's happening here? Uh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, um, I think Microsoft inspires uh, uh, many people to do their best and give it all they have. Um, so I, I absolutely think that uh, Microsoft, the things that I learned at Microsoft have a lot to do with with um, going ahead and doing CR Impact. I actually spent the first 25 years or so of my life growing up in India. And, you know, when you grow up in a country with as much diversity and, and uh, significant amount of challenges and poverty, um, you have these images of needs seared across your consciousness. Um, and coming to the Northwest, I've just, I've only been in, in Seattle for the uh, time I've been in the U.S., which is over 20 years now. Uh, I was inspired by Microsoft, inspired by folks like, um, you know, Scott especially has played a very inspirational role in my life when he joined um, our board as an investor of, of Ask Me. I used to ask him, Scott, I saw his card, it said Chief Volunteer, and I used to ask him, Scott, I know you're a legend in the Northwest and you do a lot here, what about other countries like India? Because, you know, it was always, and Scott said, Dick, I don't know anything about that, I don't know how it works, I don't know how it operates. So that was at the back of my mind. And when I met Scott and again, and uh, you know, we had this discussion, and we talked about some great perspectives that he brings to the table. Ever since I've worked uh, in and around uh, nonprofit organizations, the very single thing that most donors, regardless of size, want to know is, what's my money going to be used for? 
Is that the, the basic focus of See Your Impact? So connecting donors to outcomes is the most important focus of See Your Impact. Storytelling, we are a, a technology platform where storytelling is used to enable nonprofits to dramatically increase donor engagement and recruit more donors. So in a short answer, yes, it is absolutely the most important thing about CR Impact. Scott, you mentioned it uh, at the beginning of the show about uh, how you kind of really wanted to know how your, your charitable dollars were doing. Uh, is, do you think that you're able to show that to people through See Your Impact? Uh, very clearly. Um, if anyone were to go to the See Your Impact site, so www.seerimpact.org, uh, you can see any number of cause areas that we are actually uh, moving the needle on. And for those cause areas, whether it's solar lanterns or clean water or uh, you name it, um, you can actually go to partner sites and actually, you know, see stories uh, of beneficiaries who have been impacted by very tiny donations. So think about a bed net. A bed net costs ten dollars. Um, we work with an organization that distributes bed nets. So if you were to come to the Sea Impact site and donate ten dollars, we work with that organization. They deliver the bed net. They take a photograph and they actually write a story. That story gets routed back to you for ten dollars. Now the impact that has is tremendous. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, the very few times that we had seen the end beneficiary and learned about the story of the end beneficiary, it just wanted, want, we wanted to give more. Uh, and if you can do that for any number of people who are only giving $10 or $20 or $30, uh, we can radically change philanthropy. Dick Vijay, let's talk a little bit more about uh, connecting donors to outcomes because that does seem to be a very important part of what See Your Impact does. How do you do that? Technology in one word. So we have focused on developing a core storytelling engine that makes it cost effective for nonprofits across the spectrum. So it could be a, a single mom and pop operation nonprofit or it could be a billion dollar nonprofit. We have had storytelling cost effectively work to capture the end beneficiary story across four continents, across about 20 countries. Um, so when we have developed technology to do that. Now the story is also a story of what we call champions. These are volunteers who come together with their friends to celebrate the joy of a community coming together and making an impact. So the story is the story of a community, the story of volunteers, the story of the beneficiary, and all this can be cost effectively captured and shared with donors using our technology platform um, to create engagement and to enable these champions to get more people engaged in the cause they believe in. Okay, we got a lot of people out there who, are, who want me to ask this question right now. How does it work? So the first step is all those people who believe in some cause that their heart connects to. Um, they should go to their nonprofit and say, hey guys, you can use see your impact because I want to see where my dollars are going and I want my friends to see the lives changed. So the first step is for their nonprofit to get engaged with see your impact. They can go to our site, www.seerimpact.org and fill out their name and tell us the name of the nonprofit they want to get engaged. That's step one. Two is the nonprofit and we connect. We make our platform available to them at a very minimal cost, train them on it so that they, their staff on the ground can cost effectively capture stories of beneficiaries so that their volunteers can come together and quickly in five minutes or less create a profile that shares the volunteers joy of why they're engaged with the mission and helps the volunteer, we call them champions, get engaged in the, in the whole experience of getting their friends and family to come on board and say, hey, give to this cause. So you have champions, you have a staff trained to show where the outcome is, uh, a staff trained to show the outcome, and you have a technology platform that makes it very easy for all these people to get the outcome, get the stories back 
to the donors. Scott, let's get into some of the stories because I understand there's one that's really pretty close to your heart and that's uh, Hawthorne Elementary School uh, right in the town where you grew up. Absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, Hawthorne Elementary, uh, when I was going there, I actually thought it was a pretty good school, but I, it's kind of in the, you know, the, I won't call it the inner city of Seattle, but it's certainly in a, uh, not a, you know, a high economic uh, area. Um, but I had a, I thought I had a pretty good education going to Hawthorne Elementary. Um, if you look at the uh, kind of the fourth grade math Wassel scores uh, for the state of Washington, Hawthorne Elementary is actually um, in the very bottom. Uh, so they're not, you know, obviously they have some challenges now. Um, they came to me asking for, asking the Oki Foundation to actually write a check uh, to help Hawthorne Elementary uh, buy new library books. Uh, and I, I thought about that and they said, well, that, you know, first of all, it's the Seattle Public Schools responsibility to basically buy library books. Um, you know, there's, there's money there uh, to, to actually do that. How it gets parsed uh, is anyone's guess. But I, I said I'm a taxpayer. You know, it it should really come out of the funds that are being uh, that are being uh, uh, given to the uh, to the Seattle Public Schools. And uh, but I, I I felt guilty about saying no, so I said I'll tell you what I'll give you a small amount of money, but I want you to really use the See Your Impact platform to actually help generate even more money to buy library books. So the matching grant that uh, the Oki Foundation provided was $1,500. It's not a huge sum of money. Uh, and the expectation was, okay, $1,500, we can raise another $1,500 in a match to buy, you know, basically $3,000 uh, worth of library books. Well, by using champions, so teachers and parents and even some of the school children uh, in Hawthorne Elementary to reach out to their friends and family, um, using some of the matching funds that the Oki Foundation had provided, uh, they did about a three and a half week campaign, and at the end of that campaign, they, they ended up raising eleven thousand five hundred dollars. That all went to buy new library books for the school. Uh, it's a phenomenal story of how to really leverage a small amount of matching funds to generate lots of money doing good things. David J., when we were preparing for the show, we were talking about that particular story, and then there's lots of stories that I, I can hardly wait to get into some of them. Um, but it seems that you're focusing on the small donor, the, the $10, $15, $20 donor, as opposed to the $1,000 donors. Is that accurate? Yes, yes, very accurate. Uh, as Scott said, there's about $300 billion that gets given to charity every year in America. And a large, uh, very, very large portion of that, almost close to 70 to 75 percent, comes from individual donors. And a huge portion of that comes from people who give small donations, who make less than a six-figure salary. Uh, so that's where the potential for giving is. And that's also where uh, the significant potential exists to increase the joy of giving. That is absolutely our focus. The joy of giving. So you're talking first about connecting donors to outcomes. Do you actually help the nonprofits measure their outcomes or, or lead them into a direction where they can show their donors more? Absolutely. So measuring their outcomes, all nonprofits will attest to this. When they have board meetings, when they are getting in, going in front of their most important donors, then they always love and sometimes have to scramble to put together stories of lives changed. Because stories drive engagement. Stories of lives changed make giving real for us. The measuring the outcomes is currently chal a challenge for nonprofits because they have to focus on numbers, and numbers are not personal and real. With our storytelling engine, they can actually have hundreds of stories cost effectively gathered of actual lives changed inspiring stories of, of hope and change and courage on the ground that inspire everyone, especially the donors and the supporters. Well, let's talk about some of those stories right now. Let's go to your home country of, of India, and there's one story about uh, Mimi and Nima, the sl who uh, wanted to be sleeping peaceful at night, which, you know, that's kind of like a, a no-brainer for a lot of us, but apparently it wasn't so much of a no-brainer for, for her. Yes, yes, and this is just, you know, out of the hundreds of millions of, of uh, people in India, 
there are very large section who have no electricity at all and you can imagine going in your home and cooking and having to to kind of structure an entire entire life around sunlight what this story of nima is about is a solar lantern so we have an organization that distributes solar lanterns to villages who have no electricity so nima is a young lady who is now able to actually do her cooking and other things in her home thanks to a solar lantern that an organization um, has made available based on a donation given here. And there are other thousands of inspiring stories like that. Scott, their Microsoft alums are, are known for their philanthropy. Um, at the same point in time, they've also changed philanthropy a lot through demanding business-like results. Is this a good thing? I, I actually think it is. Um, in fact, I will make the statement um, that I, I wish more nonprofits would act and behave more like for profits. Um, and in fact, y you can take Sea or Impact as a, as a case in point here. Um, when we started thinking about what it was the, were the kind of the key critical elements that we could actually move the needle on when it comes to philanthropy. Um, you know, Digvijay and I, we said, well, my goodness, you know, when we think about creating a technology platform, um, it's one thing to do that for your own organization, right? But we said there's a bigger opportunity here, and that is whether an organization is big or small, very few of them in the nonprofit space have the capacity, have the expertise, have the funding to actually create a robust technology platform that is focused on the bottom of the philanthropic pyramid. And so, uh, you know, we, we said, well, why can't we develop the technology platform and make it available to everyone? And that, in fact, is what we are now doing. Um, so if you think about, you know, virtually any nonprofit, any cause area anywhere in the world, uh, they can essentially uh, piggyback off of the technology that we are creating through CR Impact and use it for a very nominal sum. You know, here, here's an interesting thing. And, and, and yes, I'd like yes, to add ahead. one thing to that. Um, nonprofit staff and, and the leadership, especially the operational folks, have one of the most challenging uh, jobs in the world, I would say. Uh, given poverty, given the extreme scarcity of resources, they have to make every cent go the furthest mile that it can. At the same time, there is very scarce resources available. You know, Gates Foundation is worth 40 billion total. There's a state in India called Bihar, and, and one of the Gates Foundation, uh, the guy who runs all of India, pointed out that, look, the entire giving of all the foundations in the world in the state of Bihar accounts to single digit percentage points of what the state spends in Bihar and even then Bihar is uh, one of the most one of the most poverty stricken states in India so the resource constraints are huge so while the nonprofits do a great job I think um, efficiency of technology is something that they do not have access to and that is something with uh, uh, the vision of Bill and Scott and folks who made a technology platform available to the entire world. We are trying to do the same thing. Give an efficient technology platform that is state of the art that nonprofits can use uh, so that that constraint of having the best tools and the best technology to scale their mission out is removed. Okay, don't hit me when I ask this, but you guys are sitting here you know, talking about poverty, looking really nice. I mean, what do you guys know about poverty? Good, very, very good question. And um, let, me, let me first by share some aspects of Scott's, and then I'll talk a little bit about what I know Scott's life that very few people are aware of. Uh, and this is one of the most inspirational aspects of my journey at Zero Impact is to see uh, the the value of every cent that Scott uh, cares and brings to the table. So Scott grew up in a very impoverished part of town, uh, where during his during the, the the initial years of his life, his family and this is not known and well known at all, and uh, it actually had to share a single restroom with multiple people. 
how many families in the U.S. have have had to do that? I don't know. I know families in India have had to do that and do a lot. So uh, I think the experience of poverty and making every cent go the mile is very important, and that's uh, something that I'm very grateful to um, uh, Scott for bringing to this mission. Um, my own, you know, I I grew up in a middle class family in India. And while we had, you know, we, we have, I remember five of us on one scooter going to, um, to wherever we had to go and living in a one room uh, as an army person has to live. But there are people in India who have experienced and who do experience orders of magnitude more poverty than I ever have. But to anyone who spends time in India, who grows up there in my ancestral village, I'm fortunate to be going there every year, you see the images of need seared into your consciousness. And that itself reminds you every day of how fortunate you are um, and how important it is to, to use whatever skills you have uh, towards doing something for the state of the people who are not as fortunate. So we sort of set you up on that one, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it, when, I, when I really think back on, on kind of the values that were established very early on in my life, um, a big part of it really did come from uh, our beginnings here. We, I grew up on the corner of 14th and Yesler, and uh, we did live in a, a three-room tenement. There were six of us, one bedroom, a living room, a kitchen, and a shared community bathroom. Um, and when I think back to those days, I mean, you know, as a child growing up in that environment, you don't, really don't notice, uh, you don't make any value judgments, you don't have the capacity and, you know, uh, to do that. Um, but when I reflect back on the values that my parents instilled on me, um, how they lived, how they behaved, the fact that, uh, you know, they, they volunteered a lot of their time. They didn't have any money to give, but they volunteered a lot of their time to various things that, uh, that, that I was involved in, that my brother was involved in, that my, that my sister were involved in, and other kids. Um, and it was that investment of time and energy um, on things that they were passionate about. Uh, those are values that have stuck with me to this day. Let's, let's talk a little bit about champions because uh, you've mentioned them, uh, both of you have mentioned them. Uh, what is a champion in the see or impact realm and what does it mean? Great question. So there's a lot of things that we have discovered and learned, I have personally, in, in the giving space in the last few years. And a lot of things um, that make me fall off my chair. One of them has been that 75% of giving in America happens uh, as a result of friends and family asking people to give or a family connection to a cause. So now that means that the essence of all uh, the catalyst for, for donations is people asking other people to give. When we were doing CR Impact, we saw this happening and we realized, wow, this is the core that we have to focus around. We, the, these champions are committed, passionate uh, volunteers who believe in the cause, like Sarah Lensing, who raised $50,000 uh, for Africa uh, hunger in Africa. She had adopted some kids from Africa. Single-handedly, you know, that lady dedicated weeks of her life to this. Uh, we have volunteers, kids like Bella in Dallas, Houston, who they, their kids today across uh, about 10, 12 cities in America have raised over $60,000 in small amounts from their friends and family to educate kids in India. There's a girl called Bella who um, has raised over $1,000. This is the engine of giving. And champions making their experience more joyful, giving them something that they can give back to their friends in the form of outcome of their giving and making it easy for them to ask their friends and family through technology um, is one core aspect of what's your impact enables nonprofits to do. I want another story. Let's go to Ecuador. Um, and it's a Janeth, a, a jungle mama. Is that what that is? Yes. Now imagine, so this is the incredible power of storytelling. You know, I, I was stunned. There are women in Ecuador who go and give birth on their own with a machete in the 
jungles. And, and imagine, tell me who here wouldn't give $20 towards that cause if they knew that their money was being effectively used and it was helping women get birthing kits in Ecuador. And, and Janet is, uh, there's a story about Janet um, uh, in an organization called Jungle Mama that you see her impact to be able to capture and showcase the outcome of the giving of donors um, uh, in cases like Janet, who was trained with a birthing kit and she was able to go and give that to other women in her community. Now, she was just 17 years old, I think, at the time. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, uh, the, 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 you know, the stories are just just um, so inspiring. There's another story um, uh, that that is ex very inspiring for me. My uh, Three, four years back, there was this girl uh, called Nishta who uh, we ran into. And she was writing. She had no hands. She was writing with her feet better English than my daughters write with their hands. So... Um, you know, stories are, stories drive engagement, and engagement drives giving. And what we uh, think we have is a storytelling engine that, that would enable all nonprofits in, uh, in the world to be able to do more. Nishta's story actually is, is very inspirational. Uh, fortunately, there's a little bit of video on that, and truthfully, truthfully, you're going to have to watch that part. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and, and have that in the background as we ask some, some other questions as well, if that's all right with you. Scott, I, uh, and we don't have a ton of time left, but I wanted to ask you this. Besides Hawthorne, what's your favorite story from Seer Impact? Oh, boy. Um, you know, that is a really tough question because there are any number of organizations that we have partnered with, um, you know, four continents, lots of countries, virtually, you know, a lot of different cause areas. Um, what resonates with me uh, might be a little different than, than what would resonate with Big BJ or you or anyone else. And I think the beauty of the Seer Impact platform is the fact that it embraces virtually any cause area anywhere in the world, and you really can make a difference one tiny gift at a time. And that is what we hope will happen in a very, very big way. Uh, I think it's a huge opportunity uh, to really impact hundreds of millions of lives uh, around the world. If we're sitting back here in five years and I ask you the question, how'd you do, what's your answer going to be? The answer would be how many people like uh, the Bellas and others uh, in this world have we enabled to make giving more joyful for them. Um, so it's very difficult for me to measure how I would do. I think the joy is in enabling the viewers and others uh, who volunteer their time and give their very precious time and money to many causes. So be sure and visit the website, seeyourimpact.org, and thank you very much for being with us, gentlemen. Rainmaker believes we can change the world.